Hello everyone and welcome to a very rainy Seattle, Washington, where we'll be doing a Delta Airlines flight today. It's going to be Delta flight number 1608 with service to San Diego, California. Now, we're currently at the south ramp and this is going to be with the TFDI 717-200 series. It's late in the evening so we're going to get a nice sunset departure and then it should be nice and dark by the time we get to San Diego. So let's go over the route that we'll be doing today. Now, this is skyvector.com. This is what I use to map out my routes. I took this route from FlightAware, and you can do the same. Just type in Seattle to San Diego, and you will find it. And you can get the exact uh, company route that they're currently using to do this flight. So, it's going to be a north to south route uh, with the Summer 1 departure. And the first point of interest that that will bring us to is the Lakeview VOR which is right here and then we'll be continuing down the airway onto the Mustang VOR which is a pretty busy intersection over here a lot of stuff happening in that area yeah and then um, on down south uh, eventually out to the coast and we're probably going to be doing a ILS approach into runway 9 at San Diego. The uh, visibility is deteriorating. It's about 6 miles right now. Should be down to 3 by the time we get over there. So definitely warrants uh, an ILS approach on this evening. So we're going to go ahead and start the pushback now. Just got to get the fuel pumps on the packs off and uh, we're ready to start. Um, after pushback is complete, I'll go over our taxi route with you, and then uh, we'll be on our way. Alright, so we're ready to taxi. We're going to take um, runway 16 center to get out of here today. And to do that, we're going to head out on Bravo right now. We're going to go over to Alpha, to Charlie. We're going to cross 16 left, and then that'll put us right over to 16 center. Um, so that is going to be the route today. I always welcome rain when I'm in this plane just because of the uh, raindrop effect that the uh, TFDI aircraft offers. A lot more aircraft now are, are starting to offer different rain effects, and I really enjoy having that effect. It's just uh, nice, uh, nice to have on rainy days. Adds to the immersion. Right now we're on Alpha. And going by the Seattle Tower over there on our right. I'm really happy to have Seattle now. It opens up a whole lot of routes that I can do now. As Seattle being a, um, you know, pretty much a staple airport for the United States for international and uh, domestic. 
Now we're turning on to Charlie, about to cross, 1-6 six, left, and 1-6 um, center is uh, straight ahead from there. Making sure we take off from the correct runway this time, last time. Uh, similar situation, I was supposed to cross 1-6 uh, left and go to right, but I took off from left. Um, so yeah, you always want to verify what you're doing. Just going straight ahead, yeah. The uh, starting to rain a little bit harder than it was when we took off from the gate. So that'll be nice, a nice departure. We're gonna go up to uh, flight level 330. And the flight is roughly two and a half hours, so not too long, but like I said, the visibility down in San Diego is getting a little worse. Don't think we'll need to do a auto land, but we will see. And here we are, one six center, we're just gonna hold short here. Get everything ready and then we'll line up. Getting the weather radar on now. And that should be showing up in there it is. And now we'll get the lights. And of course, the wipers, which are not totally necessary. You can still see out the windscreen, but for me, it's just fun to have those on in the rain. I always like windshield wipers. And with that, everything's good. We're gonna fly um, the 164 heading before uh, continuing on with the route. I think this might be my first departure out of Seattle in the simulator. Because I have this airport now, and like I said, it's a good one to have. Alright, we're lined up now. Let's get out of here and on to San Diego. Right gear up. Always love the gear sound in this aircraft. And uh, wave goodbye to Seattle. As we're climbing up through the skies, I'm going to go ahead and get the windshield wipers off. They have done their job. We'll just stay on this heading for a moment. Stabilizer motion. I notice with this plane, it takes a while to get up to um, your rotating speeds. Uh, something with like the uh, QMDG 747, it seems to always go really fast. You're always at the V speeds pretty quick. This plane takes a while.
Now we're still hand flying the plane. It kind of drew a weird loop um, on the intercept vector. Um, but we're able to fly right through it. And I knew if I turned on the autopilot before hitting this waypoint here, the plane was just going to loop around and try to get that intercept. Uh, and you can't clear it out of there. It'd be nice if you can clear that out of there. But uh, yeah, for some reason, once it hits that, until you reach the next in waypoint that it wants you to intercept, at least at the start of your flight sometimes, um, yeah, if you try to put the autopilot on, it's going to try to turn around and, and go get that, that, uh, that waypoint. It just drew it up weird, so... I'm not sure, but we seem to be good now. It just wants to bank to the right to get onto the magenta line, but we're in the clear now. So uh, that's one thing. Just be careful with this plane when you're on your departure. Um, if you have an intercept the waypoint, uh, make sure you hit the waypoint after that first before engaging the autopilot, or it might uh, want to get that uh, that uh, waypoint. So just be careful. So we're at 25,000 feet. We're approaching 330. And the Lakeview Waypoint is up ahead. Currently on the first officer's side, looking at the sunset, which is setting behind us. A lot of clouds out there. Of course, we have Dave mounted here on the right, but he's not on right now. Dave, of course, is the tablet, which I need to utilize more. I was using it more in the beginning, but I need to get into using it more. The lighting looks great in the 717. Excellent flight model, too, uh, on the exterior. And 717 day is coming up in a week, so we might have to do something again with the 717. Uh, I think they're releasing a, a significant update, if I'm not mistaken. So I'll try the plane out after that and see, see how she flies. a little bit of turbulence. Not, I wouldn't even really call this turbulence, just a little bit of chop. Chop is another name for turbulence. But I think used in the much lighter form when you say that. But even the wings, every little rivet, everything looks great on this plane. So night flights, usually not much to see. Can't see anything out there. So that's why I... Uh, Typically, lately, I like to do them starting out at sunset. At least you get to see some visuals, some lights on the way out. Otherwise, it's not much to see. So we're currently making our descent down to... Initially, um, we're going to be going down to about 2,000 feet. And then intercept the localizer for runway 9. And this is going to be the Shamu arrival, which I think is a—it's just an arrival just for Runway 9. So if you want to try the Runway 9 approach, uh, hook up with the uh, Shamu arrival, and then ILS for Runway 9, you can try it out. Now we're just crossing the descent marker. I started the descent a little earlier than the plane calculated, so we're just now catching up with that. Otherwise, it'll, it'll keep pushing it out and out and out further and further, the uh, marker there. But yeah, we're, we're approaching San Diego now. Um, so this is going to be where we start to line up with, uh, with nine. We're not gonna be able to see anything. Remember, visibility, um, it was around five to six. Now it is at three miles, and the ceiling's pretty low. So whenever San Diego gets like that, typically at the night, uh, possibly the mornings too. But at nighttime, what can happen a lot of times is the ceiling can get pretty low. I think with, if it's within, if it's about three hundred feet or so, or if the visibility is three miles or worse then they want you to come in on nine. I guess that's just the safer approach because you, you kind of fly near the mountains 
and uh, downtown San Diego when you come in on 27. Plus the ILS is uh, there's no ILS on 27, only on nine. But I guess coming in from the coast, in the, you know, the ocean is a safer way to come in when you have those kinds of conditions. Now we're not really flying through it yet. You can still see some of the stars, but we should be down into all that soupy stuff pretty soon. I've actually never auto landed this plane. I don't think I'm going to. Uh, the past experience I've had with um, the ILS for San Diego is it lands, it lines you up pretty far offset, um, pretty far, not not even um, really in a good way. Just in a just you're too far offset. So I don't really want to mess with that with uh, with this flight today. So once I'm um, happy with the visibility, we'll get the autopilot off and and landed ourselves today. But I do want to try a flight somewhere. When there's some nice fog, we'll uh, try to do the auto land with this plane. Now we're just skirting across Top of the cloud layers, we're starting to get into it. You can tell as the stars will slowly disappear. Another 10 miles out, we're gonna get the gear down. Slowing down to 165 knots, starting to configure the flaps. And let's get the heading bug set. We're now on the glide slope, locked on there. Might start to get a glimpse of the approach lights very soon. Pretty cool effect with the lights. Now this isn't lightning. This is just the landing lights illuminating the clouds. We Stabilizer break motion. Little patches. It's lighting up the clouds around us. That's kind of a neat effect. So we're still locked on the glide slope. We're at our approach speed of 146 knots on the 95 heading. Nothing yet. Oh, starting to get a little bit of those lights. A little glimpse. You can really tell how low the ceiling is because the, the, to have the approach lights disappear like that means we're passing through clouds. One thousand. It looks like the runway is just floating there in front of us. And there we go, I think we got through it. So we're gonna go ahead and disengage the auto throttle. 
And by doing so, I just move the lever down, and now my yoke back. Five hundred. Four hundred. The yoke is the key to three hundred. The uh, autopilot for me right now. You gotta hit that yellow button twice, otherwise it will keep barking at you. Autopilot. Minimum. Continuing. Glide slope. Glide slope. 50. Glide slope. 30. 20. 10. 5. So we're gonna exit on this taxiway and uh, go over to Charlie. Lights are looking good. Fortunately, I can't see the uh, the switches right now, and they require a right click. And if I miss that right click, a little window is going to pop up, and that's not going to look too good. So. Once we line up straight on Charlie, let's uh, have a look at the replay. Got a couple angles for you today. All right, we're on Charlie, and we're heading into the gate. We have a, uh, what I believe to be a Southwest flight taking off right now. Very cool to see that. Use an ultimate traffic live. That's what I use for my traffic. I don't always keep it on for the entire flight, but I, I definitely leave it on where it's going to be seen. The AI is not uh, always too smart. Sometimes they'll just plow into you, so you gotta be careful. You gotta stay out of their way. Uh, but it sure does look good. There's actually a lot of traffic heading out of the terminal right now. And we're approaching our gate. This is... Uh, I'm going to park with the rest of the Delta family up here once I see the light. Now, I'm still using the nose landing light because the taxi light on this aircraft is just too dark. I, st I can't see the lights uh, without it. And you'll see that when we get up here when I turn it off but it's just pretty hard to see. 
so I like to use it. And that's what I mean, I right click and you get that, that menu up, but I had to leave it in, it happened. We'll just pull straight ahead. I had to get the dome light on just to get the the light off. But see, it's still too dark and I can't see the line, so I gotta keep it on. Let's pull up there. I wish there was an add-on where you have a, a ground crew guy out here guiding you in. That'd be pretty cool. Okay, now we can get the nose light off. There we go. And now, let's get the engine shut down and get our passengers off this plane and on to where they want to go. Alright everybody, thanks for coming along with us to San Diego. Hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you next time. You all take care.